stall, there's stalls rookie year. So I don't know if it's my first year or my first second. I think it's my first. So oh yeah. So we go to Tampa. We're we're six and zero. Oh. And we're gonna go out. We all go out. Oh, it's fun club, whatever. And I'm with uh, I'm with my boy Brandon Dubinsky. I'm sitting with him the whole time, teaching him how to be a pro. This is not like, hey man, you just you know. And I'm also in shock that it's the first time I'm on the road where I'm not wearing a suit. Like I'm, I'm in actual clothes, and that was like a big like, wow, like, it was like yeah, like so. So anyway, we uh, tell him to be we're like the last to leave. We're walking out, and there's just a commotion outside. There's a commotion, and I walk out, and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, and you know, where is he going? There's just a group of guys, and there's a bunch of muscle heads. You know, some, some happened, or some, some went down. And finally, I'm coming out, and it gets calmed down.
great first year, man. These Cup Finals, it was, uh, it, was, it was, it was different. I mean, but it was at the same time. I mean, you're playing in the Bell Center. You're playing. I mean, you don't realize it until like. Every I mean, game it's, is like, it's yeah. a religion. It's a religion. And but and this is what saved me. And, and a lot of people don't know that was my years with the Devils at the end. Yeah, I'm reading about myself. You know, and Joe Newendike, which is probably one of the greatest leaders ever. Joe Newendike, I probably brought it up last time, but Joe Newendike said to me, hey, kid, don't read that. Don't read that shit. And the way he knew he was just, he's just a stud. He's like, he's like, hey, one of these days you're going to be in a spot where it's going to like, it ain't, ain't going to be for good. For some odd reason, I just made Clay and Pat Burns, like, you know, don't look at Burns, he just kind of stuck it in my head to him. For some odd reason, I don't listen much, but. I listened to those two guys and I just kind of stopped. And that also saved me in Montreal because, I mean, I'd get in the elevator when that bad year happened. I'd, I'd get in the elevator and uh, you know, my neighbors and stuff would just be like, yeah, like, dude, like dude, they're like, are you like, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, why? Like, you know, and you pass the puck with that too. Oh, but, but, okay. but I mean, but they were like, cause, dude, no, because what's being said about me and what's oh, being like, yeah. like, what's being around. I don't yeah, know. I, the, gross. I don't so, know. And, and, and then, like, I, I was talking to a reporter one time and, like, two guys grabbed me and another guy grabbed me and they're like, why the fuck are you talking to that guy? And I'm like, why? Who is that? And like, that's the guy that rips you every day, has a special thing. And I'm like, don't even know who he is, man. Don't, don't, I don't even give a fuck. Well, yeah. well, let me ask you, because for such a positive guy and everyone who's ever met you, the energy you give off is just like, I'm having a good time, I enjoy my life. But no matter what, it must have been hard, right? And like, I know you weren't reading the stuff, but for all the success you had, you know, it ends up being different that second year in Montreal. One, like, how did things change? And two, were there ever days that even a guy like you, you were really down? Yeah, when oh. he asked Joel to break his arm. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, the it face got, off. It got, uh, <laughs> no, and, and for me to sit here and say, oh, no, not a positive guy. I'm not really. I'm an asshole all day. You guys see me yeah, socially. I, so, I know yeah. what you mean. Bro. Yeah, but it was more like this. I didn't like, I didn't want people feeling sorry for me. And a lot of my friends, and they were feeling sorry. And I'm like, what are you talking? Like, you know, and the whole point was, I, every day has been a Saturday since I've come in this league. Every day I go to work, it's a Saturday. Like, holy fuck, man, I know what it's like to go to work on Monday now. Like, oh my God, like, and it's just for some odd reason, I cannot explain what happened. Like, guys ask, I'm like, I, you know, the game, I, don't, I can't explain how I look back. Because I do remember always sitting there playing in playoffs against Philly and Ken Manderville. And, you know, we all go through the sheets and I'm looking at that and he didn't score in 100 games. And I remember saying, how the fuck is that? Even? Like, it couldn't even, and I always remembered, you know, when I was there, it was like, holy fuck, like, like, and it also, it also really, you know, I, people don't understand, like, Randy McKay, Jim McKenzie, Bobby Malik, Jay Pandolfo, Ken Danico, Turner Stevenson, they would call me, not to talk hockey, to see how I'm doing. Hey kid, like then just to have reassurance that like like hey big like you know you that that went a lot like Mark like Steve Valcat he was in Russia like friends. true like like so it almost like, became a job where like they were more worried about you than you were maybe but then I, but just to hear like just to hear me talk to them and them say like like get, you know because yeah I mean and let's not face it or let's face it we weren't doing good as a team yeah. other guys were having a little success and so the pressure was. The pressure was all off everyone. Like I was, like I was the joke, which is fine. Hey, I'm a big boy. Hey, like you know, I'm still getting paid. But it became like, I mean, I'm sitting there at the rink, and I'm looking at me like, there's people, you know, 